أما بعد Certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a string and every string is in the fire. Just wanted to address you all this afternoon on a few minutes about the truth of Islamic education. Myself I used to be a Muslim chaplain at one of the institutions and I used to work with a guy called Father Hoffman 70 something year old Catholic priest and him and myself we had a discussion about educating the people who follow our religions and in his case it was the Catholic school and in my case, we had just acquired the Islamic Center of America, Masjid Ahl Sunnah, Madrasat Ahl Sunnah, before any renovations were done. So he said, you mean you're buying a school because your people want to pay for your education? As far as we're concerned, the Catholic schools are on the decline in America because they're closing down. And the Catholic schools have been well established in America. And their quality of education was a good, strong quality of education. So much so that even Muslims send their children to Catholic schools and pay for it because of the quality of the education in the Catholic schools. But he said the Catholic schools were on the decline. And if I could sit with him sometime, if I found time, to show him how we run the Muslim school successfully because the Catholics have failed to run their school and they're on the decline across America and whoever knows about this is aware of this situation but we will get back to that inshallah ta'ala but the first point I wanted to make is the point that there are people who are responsible for running the Muslim schools or there are people who are responsible for running schools in general. And the people who run or are responsible for running the schools are not like everybody else. In the sense that they're more aware or have more knowledge and experience of what it takes to run a school than most of the people who have ideas. But if we ask you with your ideas how to run a school, what are your qualifications? What are your experiences? You have nothing to say except I think that school is better or this school is better or that one. And it's all opinions and it's all ideas, but it's not based on knowledge or experience of running a school. So I just wanted to make it clear from this point of speaking with that uh, reverend father, whatever, that there are some people who are responsible for running the schools. And these people, their job is to look at the situation and to figure out how to best run the school and maintain it and keep it going. But even amongst those people who are responsible with experience and education and qualifications, even them themselves at times they find themselves incapable of handling their situation and because of it the school starts to go on a decline. So firstly, I wanted to put in your mind, inshallah, that you understand that there are some people responsible for the schools and then there are other people who just have ideas. And I want to make this statement so that you understand at the beginning to be supportive of your Muslim schools and to be supportive of the people in charge of the Muslim schools because that's their responsibility to be responsible for the schools and it's our responsibility to support them and what they need to help them run the school. As I asked the father, what's your problem? Everybody knows the Catholic schools are strong. He says, no more support. Our ideologies are no longer acceptable to the people. You know Catholicism changes every year. New fatwas from the Pope and what have you, and it's not working no more. And he was saying that, well, how are the Muslims with your ideology? So I showed them a sheet of paper 
that we used to use to teach some of the brothers there at the institution. He said, how do you learn all of that? He's asking me. I'm saying, how do I learn all of what? He said, all that stuff on the paper. He said, no, that's very basic. Everybody knows that. He says, everybody knows that. He's amazed that the Muslims, we know what we believe in. We believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day. We believe in the divine decree, the good of it, the bad of it. We believe that every soul will die and what takes place after death from being entered into the grave and from the angels coming to question him and from his grave being a place of happiness or a place of punishment and what will take place on Yawm Al-Qiyamah from the signs that will take place before Yawm Al-Qiyamah as explained in Allah's book in the Sunnah of his Messenger Sallallahu give him some examples of that the issue of the horn being blown the issue of everybody being raised back up to life and everybody coming out of the graves and on and on you know, for about five minutes just running it down, he's sitting there and say, how did you learn all that? I say, man, every Muslim knows this. What do you believe in? He says, I never thought about it. He's 72 years old or so at the time, graduated from all of those schools with the DDs and stuff, with his qualifications. He's been practicing in the field. He's running a, a church or whatever, and he runs the school. He had retired from that and that's why he was in the prison system. Okay, this man, he doesn't even know what he believes in. And he couldn't even run all five principles. Well, what do you believe in basically? Say something, man. Couple of points. What do you, you say, God, what does that mean? And how do you believe in God? And who is he in this and that? He said, I have to sit down and think about that. Nobody is going for that. People are going, alhamdulillah. And this is only a sign for us to be serious about educating our children because when you understand, then you're going to be more supportive. And the Catholics were losing their support because the people don't understand and they're not down with that belief anymore. And this is important for us to know our deen so that we can be behind it inshallah ta'ala because a lack of education on our parts is going to mean a lack of support which in turn is going to be no education for our children. So I want to get to the point that I want to mention that was mentioned on the brochure, that when it comes to running a school, many of us we think that the tuition is that which runs the school. But now you know that the tuition, it only pays for part of the running of the school. And I know you're smart, and if you're smart you can get paid because the Catholic schools are falling down and I would imagine that whoever can show them how to bring things back up will get paid. Many of us we think that you could either just raise the tuition high enough so that the tuition runs the school. And it sounds good. And people before you have believed in it and they have tried it except that they can't get enough students to pay that type of money therefore they don't have a school. Other people, they think it's bad management. You need a more qualified management team that will be able to develop a budget that would meet the tuition level. If the people pay this amount of tuition, we're going to make all of the expenses and everything, salaries and what have you, equal up to that. Okay, if you're that good, why don't you give us some examples of the schools you know, not just Muslim schools, public schools or universities that are being run and maintained and managed only on of tuition. Show us the examples. Don't just talk. It's, everything sounds good until you start living in a real world. And when you live in a real world, you have to face the reality of the real world. Schools don't operate like that. And we want to make this point clear to you because some of the Muslims have used these two excuses not to be supportive of the Muslim schools. Bad management because tuition isn't paying for everything. If I'm paying to educate my child in the school tuition, why should I pay again? Because that's how you run a school. Other people are saying, why don't you just raise the tuition up? 
the people can't afford it and you won't have a school. And sometimes before we speak, we need to think and check and research and look around until we know. So I'm making these blanket statements right now as we've looked ourselves, alhamdulillah, and the Muslims, they can look if they like, or they can accept this statement and become a lot more supportive because of the fact that tuition does not run the school. At any rate, those people who are aware of this, we understand this from the beginning. So because of it, we have to become very active in fundraising. And many of you have seen us here at the microphone or have seen some of our programs or movements where we're constantly trying to raise money for the Muslim schools. And even we can take a look at what is close to us of last year, of the deficit being in the neighborhood of $100,000 or so. And we met that last year, alhamdulillah. We met it last year, alhamdulillah. And the school was successful and we completed the school year by Allah's permission and we continued this year. So that was a, a program last year that was considered a nice successful year for the most part. And we were running with a $100,000 deficit. And this year we're running at a lesser deficit than last year, alhamdulillah, close to it, but maybe a couple of thousand dollars less. So don't look at it when you hear the word deficit or we have to raise a hundred thousand or seventy five thousand dollars. Yes, yeah, subhanallah. Just start digging in your pockets. Start calculating out you from your salaries. Start taking a look at your lifestyles and how you're living and start to figure out how you're going to be more supportive of the madrasa so that you can handle this responsibility year after year. And really sometimes we need to start looking a little farther. I'm just trying to touch the surface right now. Because the real truth about Islamic education is not where we're at right now. It's where we're going to start talking about in the future. But right now we need to start assessing our situation a little better. Because for real, we need to go into the school year satisfying the deficit. Not as we're right now trying to satisfy the deficit before the end of the school year. You got teachers sweating. You're wondering why they're sweating. It's the winter time. You're wondering why the teacher's sweating. You say, man, teaching must be a serious profession. Teachers in the classroom sweating. They're not sweating because teaching that serious. They're sweating because they don't know if they're going to get paid or not. We all going to work, getting paid, alhamdulillah. And our teachers are going to work every day. And they work harder than we work. All you have to do is talk to some of the teachers. They work harder than most of us work. And they get paid less than most of us get paid. And on top of that, they have to hear us at the microphone saying that we're raising $75,000 for a deficit. Some of them are probably calculating in their minds how many salaries that equals up to. $75,000, how many paychecks equal up to $75,000? That's quite a few paychecks. All right, the teachers, they're probably thinking about that. So really, this issue of Islamic education and raising the necessary funds to run the Islamic school is not always a topic that we need to be discussing in the middle or towards the end of the school year and having a fundraising dinner at the end of the school year in order to raise this money, in order to float the Islamic school. No. This is something that really we need to handle every summer going into the school year. Because for real, alhamdulillah, the school is doing well. And myself, alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity to travel and to visit many Muslim schools. And to see that here at Madrasa Tuhal Sunnah, walhamdulillah, we're doing well. But perfection is for Allah. And there's still a long way to go. And many of us, especially those who are responsible for the running of the school, we don't feel that the school is where we like it to be. We feel that the school, alhamdulillah, is coming along. But we have a bigger vision, inshallah ta'ala. And we're looking down the road. And we're looking at perfection, and perfection is for Allah, but we're always looking at upgrading. We're always looking at progress and development and moving forward. We're not being satisfied with second class, inshallah ta'ala. We're looking to do better. But in looking to do better, we have to handle what we have to handle right now so that we can start to move forward, inshallah ta'ala. 
The school is doing well and the school can do better inshallah ta'ala. But we have to start handling our responsibility. Because myself I'm looking forward to the year when we don't go into the school with a deficit. But that the things are handled in the summertime inshallah ta'ala. Because during the school year we're looking for a bigger future for our children inshallah ta'ala. You know that there's no Muslim board of education or do we have to inform you? Do you know where the Muslim Board of Education building is at? But if you go to every city, every city has a Board of Education building. Where's your Board of Education building? And are you satisfied with never having a Board of Education building? Or is our minds so slow and we're so short-sighted that we can't see far enough in developing the Muslim Board of Education? Okay, the Board of Education is going to be a whole separate entity from the Madrasa. And they're going to have the responsibilities of evaluating and assessing our situation in the school and helping us to improve year after year. Whether it comes to the quality of the teachers, whether it comes to the quality of the curriculum, whether it comes to the discipline problems in the school, or whatever the case may be, you'd have a whole separate building, the Board of Education handling that. Who do you think are going to finance to, bring, to, to make this a reality? We are. And if we don't, then it will never be a reality. But how can you ever think of the reality of a board of education when you go into a school year every year with a deficit? And you're still amazed that you have a deficit because you don't understand what's going on. Let's start understanding inshaAllah ta'ala. We have some things in our favor. And we might have some things that are not in our favor and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We have in our favor that we're Muslims. Now, that's in our favor that we're doing it for Allah. And that's in our favor inshaAllah ta'ala and we always have hope because we know that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's always hope for a bright future. And if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe this deen is the truth, then we have to stand for it like it's the truth and to be supportive of the madrasa. But maybe we have some things that might not be in our favor, that we're brand new. We're just in the beginning. And oftentimes in the beginning, because you have so many problems in getting things established, many of the people quit because they don't understand what being in the beginning is. They don't know what establishing a foundation is all about. You don't know that before they build an apartment building or a skyscraper, you don't know what work went into it. You don't know what work went into it architecturally, just designing. You don't know what type of work went in it laying the foundation for one of those skyscrapers you see there in New York or even those big buildings in North. What type of foundation do they have in the ground? How much money did it take in time to just build a foundation that you're just going to sit your building on? Ain't nobody eat. How are you benefiting from all that concrete in the ground? It's just a foundation. But it's going to hold up everything afterwards. And right now we're in the, in the beginning and we're building a foundation. So don't think that this hard work is going to go to naught or to no avail. No, the hard work inshallah ta'ala will be seen in the future. You're going to lay the foundation and then you're going to build on top of it. Why are you quitting when you build the foundation? How are you ever going to finish the house if you quit during the foundation? You say this is hard work. If this is hard work, what is it going to be building the actual house? We have to inshallah ta'ala don't think that this is not in our favor because we're in the beginning. Everyone had a beginning. All of you Muslims who have weak Iman and always point to so and so of a school is doing well from amongst the Kufar. You don't know what they went through in the beginning before they are what you see today. They weren't always what you see today. There was a beginning. What was that beginning like? Well, Lord, we have examples right here as we mentioned before, right there in the hospital Beth Israel. You look at it, MashaAllah, multi-million dollar hospital. Wallahi, go in there and look at the pictures of how many beds in the house it was on whatever street when they started in North. Wallahi, they wasn't big and large like they are now. They didn't have all of those employees. They didn't have that money. They didn't have the reputation. But they had people with a vision. And they had hardworking people who laid the foundation. 
who are probably not even here today. They're not even enjoying the reputation that the hospitals earned because of their hard work. The founders, they're like nobodies. They do all of the hard work and then you don't even see them afterwards. But we have to realize, inshallah ta'ala, that the hard work you do to now, today, it will benefit people in the future, inshallah ta'ala. So don't quit in the beginning. And don't be afraid of hard work. But be on top of your responsibility as this is your responsibility to build the Muslim school. To build the Muslim school. What do you think is going to be after the Board of Education? We're Muslims. Right now, the Muslims are fighting to keep the sexes separated in the school. Okay, we have from 5th grade to 12th grade separated in the same building. Don't you know that there's going to be the girls' school? Don't you know there's going to be a girls' Muslim school? And at the Muslim schools, inshallah ta'ala, they're always going to have two parts to it. The boys' building and the girls' building of the Muslim school. We don't have that right now. Do you think as Muslims we're not supposed to have that? And that we're not supposed to be working towards establishing that? And then we're still wondering why we still have some of the problems with our children because we haven't established for them what they're supposed to have of the separation of the sexes in the schools. So really right now, and I'm not even going to go farther than that. But I hope inshallah ta'ala you get the picture that where we're supposed to be is not where we're at right now. But getting there, we're going to have to take care of what we have to take care of right now. And right now we have a deficit on our hands and we're operating yearly on a deficit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us successful, but this is our responsibility. So familiarize yourself with the truth about Islamic education and make the brothers and sisters in Islam understand that they all have a part to play. Whether they have children in the school or they don't have children in the school. Whether they have children or they don't have children. Whether their children are grown up or young, everybody has a responsibility. Haven't I mentioned to you, let's take a look at some of the schools. The schools we went to, the Kafir schools, they're still sending us letters. How do you find out where I'm at? I went to school, I finished in 86. Come back to East Orange, I'm a Muslim. How you find out? I live around the corner, on the, on, around the corner from the masjid. How you find out where I live to send me a letter to ask me to support the school I graduated from? Because they know what it takes to keep the school alive. And the people who went before are still keeping those schools alive. We have a few children who graduated, as I saw some of them today. Do they understand right now after their graduation, their responsibility to their school? Do they? Other people, these schools are going okay. You're looking at these big movie stars, singers, dancers, basketball players, whatever. You know how much money they donate to the schools they came out of? Some of them didn't even come out of schools, they donating to a school. Wallahi, we have to understand the seriousness of this education. And we have to make all of the Muslims understand their responsibility. Man, I don't care what the Muslim on. I don't care what he on. He has to understand that this is his responsibility. And wherever he goes, like some people say, well, he go to such and such of a masjid. He don't come here. What that got to do with his responsibility? He Muslim, man. He got a responsibility to the Muslim schools. As a Muslim, you have a responsibility to the Muslim school. No matter what masjid you go to. Your masjid doesn't have a school. You say, well, I'm waiting for my masjid to have a school. No, this is the responsibility of all of the Muslims. Wallahi, you brothers and sisters here. When you leave and in your conversations with the other Muslims, you have to make them understand the truth. You saw the flyer, right? The word truth all jumbled up. The truth of education, the word truth all funny. Why the word truth jumbled on the fly? Truth should be straight like that. Because you don't see the truth. You're still confused about the truth of education. Wallahi, I hope that the next program we have, the truth about the Muslim education, the word truth, will be on the flyer straight. Because the Muslims will understand the truth about Islamic education. This is our responsibility not only to understand for ourselves and to be supportive ourselves with our time and our skills and our wealth, 
But we have to make the other Muslims understand also because they have to be responsible too with their time and their skills and their wealth. Do you think that a handful of Muslims are going to solve the problems of the world? Never. This is going to take a collective effort by all of the Muslims playing their parts. Some of the problems are not solved because the Muslims are not chipping in. Some of the problems that are not solved because the Muslims are not cheap chipping in. And sometimes we have ideas in our heads and we think that it solves the problem. But if it really solves the problem, it's your duty to come in and make that concept understood and be patient with whatever it takes in order to, to, for an order for that idea or that solution to be executed so that the Muslims might benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the importance of Islamic education and make us see the truth and the reality of what's going on. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be more serious about our efforts. And may He accept from us our efforts, small and big or otherwise. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka la nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. You brothers who have paid for your tickets, it's not enough. I can tell you right now. If all of the tickets were sold, I think that might equal up five, seven, less than ten thousand dollars. They know better than me. I didn't even figure out all that stuff. I know that it doesn't equal up. So whoever bought the tickets and they have money, we're trying to collect money. You sisters in the back too, sisters have money. And we know that you have money because you asked us for it. Get that money up. The sisters, you have a responsibility. I understand you have children. And I know the children have needs. Wallahi, start stretching them pampers, man. None. Stretching those pampers a little longer. Stretching everything. We trying to build and establish some Islam. And it's going to take an effort from everybody. Start getting serious about your money. You don't have no money, sister. I put all your money in there that you got right now, except a dollar and a quarter. Tomorrow, buy the Star Ledger, cut out some coupons, and wallahi, you'll save that 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars that you gave today and which you would have been given in the grocery store. Wallahi, there's ways for us to handle our business. And we're going to have to start handling it, inshallah ta'ala. Men, women, and children. Let your children understand, man. Let your children, tell your boy to fast when he go to school. You fast in a day, ah? Tell your son. Son, you fast in a day? Uh, no, I'm not fa fast, man. Take this lunch money, go put it in the sadaqah box and fast today. You're going to be all right. You fasted the month of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, encourages us to fast. 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 And put that money down for Islam. Fast. Wallahi, we need to fast more anyway. Fast and use that money for Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us and blessed us with wealth and we have a responsibility. Let's handle our responsibility and stop looking for excuses. Stop looking for why we can't handle our responsibility and just let's handle it at whatever cost it costs. Because we do things for this dunya at whatever cost it costs. Wallahi, people buy houses for the cost of the hellfire. They know riba and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger will earn them the hellfire. And wallahi, for the beauty of a house, the hellfire is more beloved to them because of that beautiful house or that beautiful car or whatever the case is. That ugly girl, kafir girl. Wallahi, they hanging out with girls haram with them for a little few minutes of a nice time. Wallahi, people go through all lengths to do what they want, to satisfy, them, to satisfy themselves. Now your Lord is calling you to do the halal. To handle your responsibility, handle your responsibility and do the halal. May Allah accept from us. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka la nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.